Hey, guess what the giveaway is today? The flagship workout program, MAPS Anabolic. In fact, in today's show, we talk a lot about MAPS Anabolic at the end of this episode. Again, it's super effective, builds muscle, speeds up the metabolism, and it makes you look sexy hot. Everybody wants to look sexy hot, right, Justin? Yeah. Absolutely. All right, so here's how you can win free access to MAPS Anabolic. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours. Also, subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. If we pick your comment, you get free access to the most effective workout program known to man, MAPS Anabolic. Also, we got a sale going on right now. MAPS Performance and MAPS Suspension, both 50% off. Go check them out at mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just make sure to use the code SEPTEMBER50. That's SEPTEMBER50 with no space for that discount. All right, enjoy the show. Hey, have you guys been getting uh, DMs about this new like science formula that predicts the best way to build muscle? Have you guys seen any of this? <laughs> no. There's right. a new one? Is it a well, real thing? So in Science Daily, this is the title. By the way, great site if you want to just read studies on anything you could possibly think of. This is the title of this of the the article. Mathematical model predicts the best way to build muscle. So this Ooh. is the University of Cambridge, and researchers have developed a mathematical model that can predict the optimum exercise regimen. When people show up, ninety percent of the time yeah. they build fifty more percent muscle than. Well, then you read <laughs> yeah. this. Then you read the study and you Facts. read the article, yeah. and it's like there's not anything really that we're learning that's new at all. It's just yeah. very complicated. But here's the end of the article. It's the last paragraph. Eventually, the researchers hope to produce a user-friendly software-based application that could give individualized exercise regimes for specific goals. <laughs> really? Oh. Oh, I, I, I hope you else figured that, that out. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, I mean, I, they're Thank in the God meantime, for the equation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it, stuff like this is, uh, it, like I know it's exciting to read about it, and that's why I'm bringing this up, but there's so, there's so many individual moving parts. And also, we've already figured it out. We've already figured out generally what works and what doesn't work. You guys are a little late. We've been doing yeah. this for a long time now. <laughs> yeah, welcome to the party. Yeah, you know, compound lifts, work a muscle two, three times a week, get stronger, you know, use resistance, rest periods. We know this already. Right, phaser workouts, yeah. yeah. So I can't wait for that study to come out. Like, you know, Cambridge University spends $500 million and figures out that, uh, you know, you need to do, uh, you know, anywhere between five to 20 reps to maximize muscle growth. Yeah. It needs to be intense. But, oh, thank you. All right. Thank you for that study. Finally. Doug, do you, uh, do you know what space movie came out in 1992? Don't do it. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't do it. I don't know, but we could Google that. <laughs> could, don't do it. Google it, Doug. I want to Google Tell it. me what space movie came out in 1992. <laughs> I, 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 how does that... Okay, so how did, <laughs> did someone hack Google? Yeah, so we're not going to portray anything that, of that search. <laughs> you you can't even, we can't even allude to the you title. can't even... Come on. Yes, you can. It's on Google. It's just Google I mean, it. it's on Google. Uh, did you just Google it? <laughs> Andrew just Googled it. How is that, how is that even... And, and how does that even work like that? Like, why, why when you search that, yeah, does that happen? Was. Is that a movie? Is that a real movie? It, has it looks to be. like a real movie. It's, it's, it's on IMBD. It's on IMBD. It's There's all the kinds of trailers and title clips. I've ever yeah. seen. I just, uh, hey, I, I don't remember this I don't movie being coming a child out. right now. But I don't I just, remember this. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it, <laughs> it was marketed. I think to it was us. like a C or D when level I was 12. movie. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. maybe, but yeah, you could try this at home. It's definitely, it's definitely a D level movie. <laughs> yeah, you know be prepared though, because yeah. it's not what you would expect. <laughs> yeah. Do you, you, you want to hear something hilarious? Uh, okay. Oh my! I do. I want to hear hilarious. I was okay. So. My daughter's now getting to the age now where, you know, she's gonna she's getting close to becoming a teenager. So hormones are starting to oh boy. come through. Yeah, you're starting to see the mood swings and stuff. And it's kind of like, as a dad, I'm just like, oh my God, what the... F-? Anyway, we're all hanging out last night and we're talking. And l- we, it, luckily we have a good relationship where everybody talks about this kind of stuff. And I'm like, what's it like with your mom? Because, you know, they, they, they're with their mom half the time and they're with me half the time. And <laughs> totally, I know. Are you totally fishing right now? <laughs> oh, yeah. And I know. <laughs> what's it like? I know just from experience, and this is a stereotype, but I think there's some truth to this, that you know, teenage girls, when, they, when they're, you know, having these changes, they tend to go battle with mom. It tends to be mom and, and daughters, right, that, during this period of time, right? And so I'm like, what's it like at, at home? And she's like, oh, it's, you know, it's, it's fine. And my son's like, no, it's not. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, keep it real. He goes, uh, he goes, it's like, he goes at least three times a week. They'll like get in this huge blowout fight. And I'll just be like, whatever. Cause I guess he's used to it. 
And he goes, and then they'll be on the couch hugging each other and crying. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Bro, I was dying. I'm like, thank God I'm not there to see that. Because it doesn't happen. Wow. It doesn't happen with me, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I understand. Like, moms and daughters have a different kind of connection. Yeah. But I, I could just picture them, like, hammering, you know, going at oh, you know, man. war. And then oh. at the end, hugging the each other. The teenage years, man. Is, oh, bro. Is it, is it inevitable? Intense. You know, this is a dad question I have for you guys since you're so far ahead of me. Is it inevitable that your child will say they hate you one day? Oh, oh man. Like, is that, oh, I, don't say that. I know. Dude. I just think about like that. I, I, you see yeah. that, right? A kid gets so angry, right? They get yeah. so angry at their mom. And it could be something stupid, right? Or dad, like telling them they can't do something. Yeah. Yeah. And then, I hate you. Like uh, I, I don't know if I how oh, well I'm gonna receive that, that when that, yeah, sure. that you have yeah. to you just you have to act like is it inevitable does it yeah, happen uh, Doug, have you got that I hate is. you yet Doug no I haven't oh, fortunately it, yeah, yeah. It, it, and yet, you, my son did the he did something probably even worse he told because remember he, like I said they're half with their mom and then half with us he told his mom he'd rather be at my house one time when they were fighting. Ooh, Which that is really yeah, that's a, that's yeah. A nice it's a low blow. And I had a real good conversation with him yeah. about that. I said, "You'd never say that. I love Dad more than you." you said, <laughs> in case you're ever. wondering, no, he didn't say that. <laughs> he didn't go that far. Yeah, you're going to Disneyland, son. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He didn't go that far. But it's just, it's yeah. just, yeah, it's <laughs> high five, little yeah. boy. And you know, they're, they're they're at the age where they get embarrassed, you know, by you know, by stuff like we're listening to you know music and. My daughter's like, this is, you know, change it. You know, she gets all rude about it. I'm like, listen, ask nicely or I'm not going to. Anyway, so we ended up putting on some music and we're listening to it. And it's a song that I have, like, there's a little bit of a story to it, right? So I start talking. So uh, this song came out when I was and my daughter's like, oh, and she like rolls her eyes in the back seat. <laughs> Can I just listen to the song? And I'm like, wow, dude. <laughs> She's on the back history. I'm like, come on, man. You got all this information you want to But you know what it is, though? You know, you're still that guy, too. Like, if you introduce a movie to us uh -huh. and we're watching, like, okay, so here's what Oh, wait, setting, watch this part right, right here. Yeah. This is the part where he's This is what the director was thinking <laughs> yeah. right in this moment. But it's like, know, bro, I'm watching it right hey, now. You wait, dude, because as it, you know, because. You have to pick and choose your battles, right? Because right, I'm like, uh, am I going to like kid her out of the car? Okay, so car? Can, can we <laughs> talk? Take yourself to school. Yeah. Like, oh. We got to talk about the new Matrix, dude, since you brought oh, this up. Like, dude, we, so we all got to see the trailer. And... Christmas, right? This is the first day of the rest of your life. But if you want it, you got to fight for it. Okay, what's your initial impression? I mean, does it look like something that's going to be a winner? Or, you know, are, are you a little bit reserved? Matrix for me is the, uh, you know, the original one, especially. It's yeah. got to be one of my favorite movies of all time. Yeah. And the, based on the trailer, it looks like, because I, in the last Matrix, the very, very last one, I think it was that one, where they said basically that Neo was like, he was like the, uh, you know, the, like the end of the formula. Like there's like, like missing pieces that because the formula is not a round number, mm -hmm. it's inevitable you're going to have Neos. He was the, I don't He's know. the what, anomaly. He was yeah. the whatchamacallit. They said something like, we've had an infinite number of you. Mm -hmm. We have to constantly deal with you. So I feel like it's, like they're trying to figure out how to control that. And so yeah. he's got, it seems like he's got some amnesia in the, in the trailer. Yeah, that was the whole part of the trailer I got was he's just sort of, and it'll be interesting to see how they like introduce him into that world again. Uh, because it's just like, it looks like they're trying to portray like our world now, right? Like with all the phones and, yeah. you know, the way that we're living and everything. And, uh, and, and then kind of repeating some of the process with the blue pill, red pill stuff. Dude, how many people today presented with, with the matrix would bl gladly be like, put me in, plug me in. I don't yeah. want to be oh, in the I real know. world. I believe anymore. we're going that way. Dude. I know, dude. I, I hope they the have, I hope they draw some parallels to that. Yeah. Like it kind of alluded in the, in the preview of like people all staring at their phones and computers. Yeah. So I hope they draw some, some parallels to that, to, to modern time and what we're dealing with right now. It'd be um, a trip. If you all of a sudden he pops up on somebody's iPad, Hey, I'm Neo. Let yeah. me out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, in, uh, historically, uh, has a part four ever done good? No. Uh, ever? So. Uh, Rocky four. <laughs> he always to the, with the Rocky, course, dude. Of course, so you refer yeah. to that. Hey, you, hey, you're no. right. Rocky four was awesome. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> Rocky was amazing. Yeah. No, it was a romantic that. movie. No, 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 no. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. <laughs> and of course, they get to see. Stop. You knew that was coming. Putting words in my mouth. I, I totally. Okay. I, Rocky one. I get that. I get one it. of the greatest love stories ever told. <laughs> okay, Rocky two, great movie. Rocky painful, three sucked. Yeah. Okay. I know all the people, fans. No, that was a, that was a crappy movie, but it was cool to watch. Four is the Russian, right? Four is when he fought the Russian. 
yeah, and it was, was cheesy and all that stuff. But I it, loved did, it. it did well on the box office. Oh, and I think it was a, my favorite. I one. think it's the best one. It's dude, my favorite. I've watched that one more than any other one for sure. Yeah. It, so. it, it was definitely. It's got the so best. You win that. Yeah, yeah. Is that that's got to be the only one though, right? Can you think of an, a part four of any Star Wars? Yeah, well, that's, that's, <laughs> that's they started it the out with part four. That's, that's right. Why, yeah, because yeah, like, that, that, that technically wasn't, right? Yeah. yeah. You know what I watched the other night that I hadn't seen in a long time? So this is a kind of a weird movie that I loved as a kid, uh, Saturday Night Fever. So when I was a, a teenager, oh, yeah. I found this movie and I Travolta. loved it. Yeah, right away because I thought he was so cool. You know, he's an Italian dude and he gets all the chicks or whatever. Yeah. Anyway, I hadn't it's watched this since I was- bottom pants. I haven't watched this since I was in high school. I put it on again last night and I'm watching it and- I didn't realize how big a douchebags all the characters were in that movie. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> they are terrible people. I don't remember like cat collars or what. Dude, they're terrible. Yeah. The way that they're yeah, all of that total douchebags and shitty fucks. And it's just I was watching. I'm like, holy cow, this is terrible. <laughs> this would not fly today, whatsoever at yeah. all. Still entertaining though. Yeah. <laughs> but you think the, we're gonna see like canceling of old movies and stuff like that? I mean, dude. there's a lot of stuff back <laughs> back in the '80s and before that it's was pretty too rough. much to cancel at that point. Yeah, right? I don't know. You ever <laughs> watch? Stay out of certain eras. Oh, watch uh, Blazing Saddles. Yeah, no, I told you guys about this. Like my parents like played that movie for my kids, thinking it's a funny movie. <laughs> That's right. I'm sitting in, and I'm like, this is not appropriate. Dude. This is really bad. Like dude. it's just like it, it's like shock value humor and yeah. so like back then i think it was really funny just because it was like wow that's really shocking and, and but now it's just it's just gross and offensive yeah like, i was like a it's little like ah. definitely you know what else is if, okay if you ever want to trip yourself out watch old cartoons so like oh, yeah. watch old tom and jerry yeah, yeah, yeah. they're smoking cigarettes Riley coyote yeah you know tom you know or jerry dresses up like a girl yeah. Yeah. pound and then, alcohol and, yeah, yeah and then goes and then jerry's like Totally like molesting her or whatever, going yeah. after, and you're watching dude, this. this Pepe Le Pew, dude, like yeah. like going around. Well, that's trying why they to get try to cancel cat. him. Yeah, try to cancel. Him. Oh yeah, Pepe Le Pew is actually. Dude, is. he was for sure the most aggressive. I I got some like crazy interesting news, and I, I'm gonna need Doug to fact check me because I I only I only read it in one place, and it was like late last night, so I didn't have time to like go down the rabbit hole. But did you guys hear what Amazon is doing mm -hmm. as far with school loans? No. no. Oh, you guys didn't hear this. No. Uh -uh. That's so Am Amazon has vowed to pay for all hourly employees school loans. That's over like 150,000 employees that work for them as hourly. Now, how does this work? Do they, they pay it over time wow. if you stay there? It's part of your... So th these are the details that I'll need Doug to help me out with because I don't know exactly what the, the rules are as far as like how do you get it reinvert... Here it is right here. Amazon to cover 100% of college tuition for U.S. hourly employees. So if you work there, the, then that's part of the, the benefits. How cool that is that? Offer. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. You know what though? That's, this is what I would say. Crazy. Here's what I would say as an employee. I'd be like, just give me money. Well, yeah. Just take the, whatever you're going to pay me for my you know, my. But it sounds. I like mean, a it's great, just it's yeah, it's an incentive. Like yeah. I, I think some people get um, you know bought into certain mm -hmm. companies because they do things like that. Like certain things resonate with them. Well, do yeah. you think that they worked some sort of a deal out? Maybe even with maybe. like the banks and stuff. Like, hey, like we'll be able to pay you outright on these loans, or or would you? I don't know if they take them over. That's different than saying we'll pay it. You know, it would be different if they bought the loan. Uh, versus if they just you show them the loan. Oh, so your pay. thought, your theory, they give is it to you in your check while you're while you're going or working there. They will allocate certain amount of money to over towards your loan. Yeah, I think it, I think they will pay you in full. Is what they're. Yeah, it's a uh, fifty two hundred dollar cap per employee. Oh, uh, cap per right. year. Okay. okay, so it won't cover most. It's not going to pay for Harvard. So you only yeah. you only have to wait work there for forty years. And <laughs> <laughs> one year of college paid up. And they're also limiting it to fields like IT, healthcare, transportation. Yeah. So it's not going to be you know gender studies or something like that. Yeah. By the uh, way, this is this is uh, really awesome because it displays just how great competitive markets are because their tech is so competitive. Yeah. That's that they a have selling point, right? There. It is, and then you have Google, which they're still doing, and it's, I guess it's taken off where they're doing these certificates. These, I think, is it Google six month, so six month courses that they'll weigh as heavily as a bachelor degree. Yeah, and and I, are, I feel like this is the, kind of the natural cool. progression yeah. to that. Like so this whole, like the, like that's like the first thing. Oh, we'll start paying for some of your school before long. It's going to be like you go to our school. Yeah. And then you guaranteed job here or whatever. And again, this is the beauty of the market. As it gets more advanced, you, not, you don't just attract customers with product and price, although that's still king, but you also throw other things in to attract the type of customer you want. For example, uh, our partner, Public Goods, right? So Public Goods sells home products. They sell dog food. They sell you know, other 
products there, and and their whole thing is you save money, minimal packaging, environmentally, um, definitely environmentally conscious, very low cost, very very extremely low cost. But they're also doing this uh, carbon neutral thing where for every for whatever carbon footprint they put out, they'll grow that many trees to offset it. Oh, that's correct. So they're oh, wow. neutral. Carbon neutral as is, part of their. Is it every time someone buys something, or is it a certain amount that is spent? Do you know, Doug, what that is? I know that they did something like every that. Every order. Oh, every one order. tree. Oh, no way! Wow, wow, That's sick. You know what you can grow I'm to do that, you, man. I, I remember reading that, like how just just one tree can impact the environment, like so positively versus, uh, you know, what your output of carbon. Do you is. know what plant? There's a plant that does that incredibly and grows very fast. Cannabis. Oh, cannabis. Cannabis is a phenomenal. Uh, mm. plant to capture carbon. I didn't know that. It's also, Why did I not know that? It also grows very, very quickly. Yeah. And what you can also, cannabis not do? Yeah, and you can also it's... use cannabis to make medicines or, you know, fun stuff. How could you not be, <laughs> yeah. you not be pro-marijuana? For, pe right. for people. so many good things. Right? Yeah. I think a lot of people are pro-marijuana that's just they forget. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we got to do something about What made me oh, think man, of this was like, you that. know, you brought the other day, you were starting to bring like good news. I, I, I want to make a, a conscious effort to be a platform that, especially in a time right now when there's so much negative bullshit and separating all of us and talking about all the bad stuff, like to try and bring yes. like really cool things that companies and people and positive things yeah. that are happening. Uh, I saw another one with Airbnb. I didn't know Airbnb did, did this also. They have like a um, nonprofit arm. And they will. They are going to be housing twenty thousand uh, refugees from Afghan. Wow! Yeah, from Afghanistan. Afghanistan. Yeah, twenty thousand will be housed through Airbnb, and they basically give a voucher to owners. So let's say we rented some of our houses oh, on like Airbnb. That. They Airbnb picks up the bill and says, "Hey, we would like to rent your house for the entire year, or whatever like that. Here's a voucher for that. That's great. Yeah, yeah. and they they obviously they don't got to pay their Airbnb fees, so they save a little there, so that, that, that it's going to be a discounted rate. So I get what we would normally make as far as wow, um, that's really interesting. I know. Very I cool. would guess that if you if you were this is my assumption, okay. So I, I obviously have nothing to back this up, but I would assume that if you took someone like that and put them in your place." that they would probably be excellent uh, people in your home because they're out. They're probably very grateful. Mm -hmm. And in my experience, um, you know, immigrants that come over that way tend to be very, they tend to really value what, you know, what they have. That's just my. Yeah. That's a positive thought. I don't know how true that is though. You're right. But I, but it, that, that's, that's my assumption. Cause I believe that there's stuff to support when people get things for free, they're less likely to treat it well. Right. Well, I it's not entire. Of, you're right, but it's not entirely for free. It's like, Hey, you you're not for free. you know you're not under the Taliban anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's you know true. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, no, like, true. hey, welcome. I mean, I I I I want to believe what you're saying is 100 percent true, and that yeah. somebody in that situation would be so grateful and appreciative that they would go above and beyond yeah. to take care of that. But you know, human behavior is interesting. I you know? Actually, I got a quote for you, Adam, that I would love uh, to talk about because I I didn't know. I actually, post you ever do this on Facebook where it says, you know, eight years ago you posted this or whatever. And sometimes it makes me sad because I see old videos of my kids and stuff, and I'm like, oh, why'd you show me this? But every once in a while, I see a meme or a quote that I posted that I totally forgot about. This is a quote from Henry Ford. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Oh, I and love it's, Henry it's, Ford's And quotes. it's a great thing. I think this, this will start a good conversation. So here's the quote. If I had asked people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. So that's a quote from Henry Ford. In other words, yeah. you know, in mm -hmm. business, you're always told, ask your customers what they want. Uh -huh. But when you're really innovating, like they're not going to even come you have up to with- think beyond them, yeah. Exactly. So yeah. it's like, I, I didn't ask them because what are they going to say? They want faster. I no. thought that was a very interesting- you got to be well, a special kind of entrepreneur, though, to have right. That kind of I force. think right exactly. away, I think of the Elon Musk, the yeah. Jeff Bezos, people like that. There's if you ask those guys, off. you know, or what the, the fields are in, oh, could you make this? Uh, you know, could you make mail delivered faster? And you know, Bezos thinks like I'm going to reinvent it completely and turn it upside down. And yeah. you're asking the wrong question, right? Like they yeah. they have the ability to see a whole different vision. Yeah, you know, for a long time, the U.S. Postal Service. Would they just laughed and said it's totally impossible to deliver things next day? They said it's just not going to work. It'll never work. It's impossible. And then of course Amazon's like, yeah, we can do it. 
and then now everybody's trying to, you know, everybody. Is there anything that comes to mind for you guys right now that seems like that? That seems like, oh, we'll be, we'll have to use this way of doing things forever because it's just, there's no way to do it. A feasible way to do any other way that will get disrupted. You know what? What's the next big industry to get disrupted? That's a good question. You know what I think with the. DMV will never get disrupted. (laughs) Unless we decentralize it. Yeah. Yeah, Dude, my my son's going to get his license and you go in the DMV and it's like. What did I just go back in time? It, it is. It, it, they got like micro features there, dude. Like, this is insane. It's like yeah. this paper, stamp it here, bring it over here. Do I, they it over just here. recently, here. Yeah, like, they just recently yeah. moved past the, like the green screen computers. It wasn't even that long ago. I remember it was a few years ago. I went in there. I thought I saw a green yeah, screen. Like, is Oregon on. Trail on here, yeah, dude? Like, awesome. Really? Oh, <laughs> yeah. you know what? You know what? I think with delivery, I think that not too long from now, we're going to be at a point where you'll buy something and you'll get it within an hour. It'll be literally within an hour, and it'll be delivered by drone. That's what I think. Well, you know, and I wonder how yeah. long that will last in, in, in before you have the 3D printing thing. Uh, th- we haven't right. talked about that in a long time. I, I wonder what uh, that looks like now in terms of um, that being – more retail or like, you know, like, cause it seems like the only people that are buying those are like these big companies that can justify, yeah. you know, They're making expensive. a bunch of figurines or, or, you know, uh, construction. Are they really that crazy? Something. We've actually, we have yeah, a lot expensive. of actually mind pump listeners that have them. Yeah. Like small ones, yeah. not like huge yeah. industrial. Well, yeah. What, what will be really um, disrupting is expensive right now. The, the ones that you could buy, they're pretty basic. But, can, but it's you know, still a novelty. It's not like something yes. real functional. Yes, but when it gets to the point where you could buy a 3D printer and it can print complex things and with different textures and different materials, that's going to be... I can't think of anything that, off the top of my head, that's going to be more disrupting than that. Because theoretically, you should be able to, with a 3D printer, it, this technology will exist, well, where you can 3D print drugs and medicines through molecules. You'll literally be able to say... I want this particular medicine and it'll 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 be able to print it for you. Or that'll be highly regulated. Or th- that that and making guns will be the last thing we'll, we'll be able to do. Or three D print yeah. organs. It'll take your own DNA, grow tissue, and boom, you have a liver or you have a heart or whatever. Well, we're so attached to our phone right now, but that has to be, you know, disrupted hard. And it's gonna be a hard transition. Mm. But the whole augmented reality thing, I think, you know, does to me it looks like it's a feasible thing. And then the glasses thing, it just hasn't really taken off yet right like people aren't just yeah. like putting glasses on and want to see holograms or whatnot but at some point it's going to make sense because then it's like you're going to have this whole um you know signage and you know basically minority report where you're like walking past the uh, different stores and they're marketing to you and all, all kinds of crazy so stuff i like i still envision it the as the next leap or transition as like this you know, hovering kind of ball, like, you know, almost like a uh, drone that just like is, is like attached to you. Like if you have like, maybe you have the actual phone or something that's in your pocket. I had, so it's so funny. Like I told you guys, I wrote a science fiction novel. Like yeah. we called it the NIM and it was like this little ball that just yes. would follow you around. Don't give it and away. I, and yeah. I feel it'll be just like with like Siri and everything. It'll be all voice activated. So call Justin, text Sal this, order me this. Uh-huh. And it and it's and it's it's recording me. So yeah. like, oh, reply, put that up on my Instagram. You know, oh, throw that up on TikTok. It's like your little servant. You yes, know, it's, and it'll be able to do yeah, a lot of that now, stuff. Are people going to gonna fly back and forth to the moon first? Or is that going <laughs> to <laughs> <laughs> we should have like a I whole definitely think this, I think this is first. I think, th- I think we're not far with when you look at the way drones, how popular drones Dude, are getting and how Do you cool know how do you, do you you guys even realize how disrupting it will be when you can record everything you see all day long? Do you have any idea what that's going to do to to just mankind? I think we're already seeing that. You already see people we're that definitely are moving towards it. holding people accountable because of something they were recorded yeah. doing or said or posted. Dude, imagine arguing with your spouse. Like, you said, no, I didn't. I said this. Yeah. Oh, fuck, I'm wrong. It's, you know what? I, <laughs> You're the, right. It'll be interesting what it does to our society, too, as far as being a better human. Do you think that, like, I think there's going to be natural growing pains and a lot of resistance and a lot of people that are going to hate all that. But you would think that because you're watched and you're recorded and... It- but does that make you a better person or is it that you're fearful? So like, yeah. in other words, you know, I don't kill someone because yeah. I don't want to go to jail. Not because I think it's wrong to yeah, kill someone. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that fixes internally what's going on inside, but it may make you a better person in society. Like you may not, you may, you're less likely to say something mean or hurtful or do yeah, something to another you're person. more accountable. You may still be an actions. asshole inside. I don't know. I, <laughs> here's the, here's the devil's advocate. <laughs> Keep my asshole inside. Yeah. 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 Here's, here's the devil's advocate. <laughs> I'm fixing that. I know. 
here's the, the devil's advocate in me is like, look, prison. People in prison are highly, highly, highly monitored, and they're fucked. They do terrible things to each other. When you feel like you're constantly being watched, it might change your behaviors, but I don't know if it's going to change. See, I don't. Necessarily but I don't think way. it'll it'll work like that. I think it'll work the way we're watching it happen right now. Like, I mean, how what you guys? I guarantee, just like me, you before you post something on Instagram. You think about it. Uh, you take a moment and you pause. You think, is is this? Am I saying this the way I want to say it, or are people going to take this out of context? And how you think about that now, where before you may not do that. You would be with friends and you'd say how you feel and you would do things no matter what. So you're already self regulating you have naturally. Black, you know, you'll have a black market for conversations. <laughs> Seriously, you'll meet up with your friends. Totally. You, turn everything you off. Turn it off. Like, bro, here's you, what I really think. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, some you, some you, kind of like I, EMP. Again, or I don't disagree. Sure. That's the, to your back to your point of like, it's not going to change people internally, but socially it may change the way we interact with each other. And you, we may have a overall better interaction with people because of self-regulation based off oh, of that. Oh, man. You know what's weird is that, uh, and didn't the didn't the government step in and say, we don't know if this, this merger can happen where you had, uh, like I think it was Fitbit and Google or something like that? Oh, um, yeah, yeah. And the, Too the, much power. Well, again, imagine if you have these devices on you that measure heart rate, yeah. hormones. Well, your health uh, measures. Eye pupils, all that stuff. And then advertisers are using these metrics to see, and then politicians, here's the real fucking problem. Mm -hmm. po all the same advertising science you get with advertising is used by politicians to scare you or to get you you know, angry or whatever. This is why it's so effective nowadays. Yeah. So if they can like measure your... Oh, their pulse goes up a little bit when we do this, and we notice a little bit of, you know, that this this person gets a slightly aroused, and we notice the pupils increase here, and they can perfect to the point where they can literally move you in all kinds of weird directions. That's going to be well. There's there's some people that believe that's already happening with like you know the whole uh, idea of like uh, Facebook and they're you know recording you and paying attention to you yeah. through the cameras and stuff. I think it's already being done. I just think it's the thing that everyone's scared about or what they freak out about is like they're you know oh my god invasion of privacy. They're going to use all this. It's like all they care about is selling you more. So if they are using that, it's literally for things like that. Like, oh, this person got hit with this Facebook ad, their expression, they smiled, yeah. their eyes lit up, their pupils dilated. Like, okay, that and there's an algorithm to try and, you know, market to them better. I think if it's being used, it's being used like that already. Yeah. But you know, they're just not saying anything about other it. Other people get their hands on that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't tell you. Yeah, yeah this, it's, like it's, it's, I don't it's know. interesting. There's a dark side to all the advancements for sure. Yeah. I mean, more information. I had this conversation with my son. Uh, it wasn't that long ago. All of us can remember this when literally this was what people said. If we just have access to all the information, if the average man or average person has access to all the information, we will solve all of our problems because it's lack of information. And in the past, the the people who had power were the ones that had access to information. They were the they they were the the door to the information. So in the past, it was the church, or the clergy, or the nobles. And if people didn't read. They had to ask them, "What does this book say? Give me the information." And then all of a sudden, the printing press came out. People could own books. It definitely caused lots of advancements and this stuff. But now, because information is so available and all over the place, and they're constantly bombarding you with shit. People with power are the ones that can sift through the information and know what to ignore. Yeah, that's the wisdom you know I mean? thing that you always talk about. Yeah. But I mean, I was just I was just uh, listening to this podcast with this. It was real estate talk and stuff like that. But they were actually talking about the uh, the millennials. That generation is actually the the most educated generation that we've had yet. Yeah. So they're they're getting smarter. We're getting smarter as a society. Maybe we still do stupid shit. Maybe it yeah. doesn't replace wisdom. But as far as being more educated and uh, knowing more technically, that's true. 100%. I mean, that's happening. Yeah, when they look at the statistics too, um, people coming up are less likely to commit crimes, less likely to be addicted mm -hmm. to drugs. But there is there are a couple uh, statistics that are alarming. Anxiety has is constantly rising. Anxiety, fertility is going down too. Yeah, right? fertility. That's that has to, probably has to do with like environmental factors and yeah. health. And um, and uh, I mental think health issues. Did you know today? This I read this the other day. I would love to look it up to confirm it. The average person today has anxiety levels, reported anxiety levels that would have gotten them admitted in the 1950s. Yeah. So that's how much higher the anxiety level is today than it was, you know, 70 years ago. We were. I was just talking to a client about this today, and part of her job is to. She works with like the the HR department and their their health insurance with the company and stuff like that, and they they have all these crazy things they monitor, 
And she says last year, the, the rise in uh, anxiety, depression, uh, like Medicaid, like she can, she can't see the people. Like it's yeah. obviously they're protected by like their names and stuff, but they can see statistics like, you know, 10, a hundred people did this, 10 people did that. Um, and she said the last year there was a dramatic rise. Well, all- think about when we were kids, right? So we grew up as little kids during the, some dangerous times of the cold war. So in the eighties, right, you had the Soviet union, the U S and however, we weren't constantly bombarded with the dangers of that. You know, when we were reminded when we did that once a year d- drill where you'd have to go into the desk <clears throat> yeah, and then that was it. And if you wanted to watch the news in the eighties, you had to tune in at 6 PM with your dad and like it's boring. Friday or nobody gets like a specific shit. days too. Yeah. Now if you're a kid, you go, I don't care where you go, Roblox, you go on Instagram, you go, you're constantly reading shit all the time. And not only that, and then in school, they're like, it's better to inform the kids of the dangers of the world that they have no influence over. Yeah. So you're in fourth grade, you come home and you're like, mom, dad, the earth is going to end. And it's like, why would you tell a fourth grader? Yeah. They don't know. They can't control any of that. They, they have they no turn say. Into Greta Thunberg's and then yeah. they're like preaching it on yeah. every other I mean, kid. I, I, I largely, not all, but largely blame social media for a lot of the rise in totally. that stuff. I yep. mean, it just, you, we never had the the news cycle in your face that fast Everywhere. to that to that many people. Yeah. Um, and because it's it's attracted so many of the young minds, like you said too, like when you were a kid, even if you're if you had parents that watched the news religiously every night, you weren't watching. I it. knew. No, did you guys well, know the worst about? Is they only pay attention to the titles. They don't even yeah. read the articles. But when you're a kid, pass those look, on. What what wars happened in the eight? Didn't we invade a couple places? I think Kosovo and I don't know. Did you guys know about this shit in elementary school? I had no fucking idea. <laughs> no, I had no idea. I had no idea. No. Kids know everything now. Yeah, They're no. constantly bombarded. And I'm glad with. I didn't. I did. You know why? Did you know one of the one of the uh, who was I talking to? I was talking to somebody who this is what they do. They work with people who are anxious and you know they, they help treat them. They say one of the number one most effective things that they have them do turn off their social media. Turn off social media for sure. That's I it. mean I feel turn like off if, the news and turn off social media. You're we're all pretty self aware and and pay attention to that stuff like that and we're not on social media that much in comparison to I think the average person and. You know, I find myself, there's times where, I mean, you were just talking about Justin earlier, like yeah. somebody DMs you and you catch yourself. Like, you get I, trapped. Yeah, like, I, why I, am I defending myself Yeah, I'm like, I'm, yeah. I'm like, I'm arguing with this person. I have no idea who the fuck they are. Right. They don't care about me. I don't care about them, but yet they've just sucked 20 minutes of my time of me going like, what? And then, yeah. and the way I, and the, you know, it's, what drives me crazy is like, once I start and I get into it, like. I want to finish. I want to finish my point or I want to like... I want to win. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. You ain't going to win. Nobody cares. And it's like... It's I just want to express my full thought, you know, to its, to its extent. Right. You know, and it's so it's like you don't you don't get the full amount of it unless I really like pour myself into it. And then now you find yourself like hours later, like trying to express all of it. Well, and, and I, just, I justify it as, oh, it's a healthy debate and this is good for me to talk to people that disagree with me so I can right. listen to their point of view. So I'm, I have this justification going on in my head exactly while I'm doing thinking. it but then the way it makes me feel I'm I'm anxious I'm angry protect and- your men- your mental health just like you protect you protect totally. your physical health that's yeah. literally what you have to do like Jessica is really good at this she turns it all off and she's like I feel so much better and I'm like you know I, I that's a smart strategy it's a very smart strategy when you start to find yourself because bad news we are wired to follow bad news because it was beneficial evolutionarily speaking. That's why even the three of us or the four of us, we can get together and one of us will start it off. Hey, did you see what happened today? And so and so. Oh my God. And then next thing you know, it's like 45 minutes of us making ourselves well, feel more angry. Dude, we used to have like positive, hopeful messages out there, you know, like like that we're getting a lot more media coverage and publicity. And it's like there's nothing. Yeah. nothing I can point to as an example of a leader out there, uh, you know, really taking the reins with that, trying to bring people together. Everybody is motivated to separate. And sports. It's, it's it all makes we have. me sick. Yeah, not even, even that, though, they try to get into. No, the, dude, it's in sports <laughs> now, bro. They try to fuck my sports up the last couple of years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dude. Stay away, that dude. That used to be a safe haven. Yeah, it is supposed yeah. to be a safe haven. Hell, I think that's why I was yeah. so passionate about that a couple of years ago. I was just like, like oh, you want to chill? Dude. Sorry, guy. Yeah. <laughs> you I can't know. chill. Uh, did you 
you see, by the way, speaking of this stuff, did you guys, uh, so you know that Trump is going to be commentating on the fight that, or, or on that fight, right? Yes, yeah, on that, yes, right? Okay. yes, that's right. Did you, uh, did you hear his comment on, uh, he said, what would, what would happen if you got in the, in the ring with Biden? He's like, I'd knock him out or some yeah. shit. <laughs> what are you doing, bro? He, you know what? Why from, are you talking about I don't know if it's just because I'm following different stuff Stupid. or what, but uh, ever since he got, you know, banned and kicked off of Twitter and, and the social platforms, I don't see any news around him anymore. Yeah. I never get anything, not like I used to. Like no, he still gets blamed for everything, which is interesting. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's on purpose. They, they, they shut him down pretty good. Yeah. Oh, no, they obviously yeah. they did. Because everything I, in California isn't working. Like it's I Trump's said, I, I used to yeah. get stuff on, on what he's saying or what's going on. Like I did pop in my feed like all the time where now I don't see. I thought he, it feels like to me he's disappeared. Yeah. 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 That's by design. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's very yeah. effective, yeah. by the way. <laughs> Yeah, very very interesting. Shut them out. You, you should. You definitely need to protect your mental health. And it's uh, again, it's like what you can ignore now is actually what gives you power. Right? I, I, just, I think it's really it. important to all of our parents that are listening because I know that I I know that I'm gonna. It's something that I know I'm gonna have to communicate to my son, and I want to make sure that like, and it, it, it's such a fine dance as a parent, right? Like you don't want to be the parent who like put your kid on an island by saying he can't have these things. Like yeah. he can't use Instagram. He can't. And it's like, you don't want to beat that parent. Cause then they're going to revolt when they get out or get any free time or lie to you anyways. But at the same time too, you want to be able to make them aware of the power of this tool. Yeah. It's like, Hey, this is, you know, what's so important. Yeah. Like it's always been important, but I see so much value in it now as a father, especially with electronics is to have a scheduled dinner time with the family. Mm hmm. Because if you don't, it's very easy to go an entire day and, and not all of us get together and connect, you know, because they're older now. My older kids are older now. So they go to school. Oh, got to come home. Got to do homework. Then everybody's on devices. But dinner time is scheduled. So, hey, guys, we're going to have dinner in 15 minutes. Be ready. Then they come down. We all eat dinner together. There's no electronics at the table. Conversation starts happening. What happened today? This is what happened. We have good conversation. And then, and then afterwards is the cleanup. And this is very important. The kids, the older kids, their job is to wash the dishes and put them away. And my daughter especially will him and haw about it. Like, oh, I don't want to do whatever. But what ends up happening is we have great conversations. And it's really, honest to God, it's like a one and a half hour window every day that we get to hang out. Yeah. If we didn't do that, it would be so hard to get mm -hmm. that connection with everybody. And mm -hmm. so I'm so happy that that was instilled in me as a kid. Like, that was a big deal. Like, yeah, you don't yeah. miss dinner. You know, with mom. You're and dad. Uh, so. Are you you're cooking for yourself right now, huh? What's up? Yeah. Going? Does that mean you're yeah, eating next, out or what's up? <laughs> there's like four days, dude. I'm like, oh, I'm, wait a it, minute. What? How long are you alone? Four days. Wow. Yeah. Wow. This, yeah. I'm you just gonna be come back with tennis elbow. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Get the ball Courtney left jerseys. already, right? She's gone she already. Left. Yeah. yeah so but I, you have the boys though, still, right? You yeah. light the candles, fill up the bathtub. <laughs> Dude, I, I get I get crazy though. If I'm by myself, I just I, I get like stir crazy. I don't know how to chill, you know. And so I'm, I'm like, I guarantee I'm gonna be looking at certain walls. I'm like, I gotta do something with this wall. Or, <laughs> no. You know, I gotta go to Home Depot. I gotta go get stuff. Like I'm gonna go on this rampage of just like, and, and then the kids are always just like, ah, oh, can we just go like to the boardwalk, Dad, or do something fun? <laughs> so we'll see. You, I, I might do that. Do you have a room or in your new place? Do you have something that's like yours? Where you're gonna make it, you know, kind of what you want? Yeah, downstairs, uh, I got uh, this room that is basically like an office room, but I'm gonna turn it into kind of like, you know, a music man cave kind of, oh. you know, with like leather couch and 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 like stupid sci-fi posters and you know like a record player and like I'll sit in there. Now you're gonna go all out thing. and make it like like sound dampening. Oh, bro, I got all kinds of plans for this. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. I, cool. I, I wanted no to idea. get you something the other day, but I didn't know if you would use. It. So it was this. Uh, it looks like it was like a real fancy looking like globe, but the globe opens up. And where it will hold like a, a bottle Alcohol. of scotch. Yeah. I've seen that. Is that yeah. That's a, that's would a classic. You rock, would you rock that or what? Would yeah, you put that? I mean, that's I had cool. One. Did you yeah. really? I did. Now, if you get a nice one, they can get real expensive. Yeah. That's uh, but yeah. that's a classic. That's yeah. like well, a classic. Uh -huh. Yeah. The one I, so there's this other, this company out of like Austin, Texas. They make these sick, like, um, it's, it, it's kind of like, a, um, what's the, it's kind of like jukebox era kind of, mm. um, uh, uh, furniture. But they have one that had it was a record player, but also it was a bar at the same time. And so it was like a built-in speakers, and then you slide open this uh, this um, uh, cabinet, and you also have the record player in there with a full bar. I was like, oh, dude, rad. this is sick. Oh, that's cool. You know so, what? I, you know, it would be cool. It'd be like a stormtrooper. 
Just like a life-size stormtrooper. <laughs> <laughs> don't laugh like you don't think that's cool I right mean, now. I mean, yeah, but like... <laughs> I, I, don't pretend the, like you, you know, wouldn't be excited I, if I got that for you. Of, of drinking, but that's like a, a little and, kid. Like I wanted to be like a man cave. Yeah, hey, it's a big one, a big. Storm speaking of drinking at bars, did you guys ever see that jukebox thing Maybe. that I told you guys about years ago? That where you could you pay for songs. It's all it's all digital, right? So you come into a bar. It, it, the funny part was the first time I ever saw this was actually at my little hometown cowboy hick bar place. I thought it was crazy. They had this big old jukebox thing on the wall, and it looks almost like a what's that tonal thing, right? Like it looks like a big mirror, and it's digital. Oh, and, it's an app, and you download an app on your phone, and you can control the jukebox there, and I have you seen that. you buy Sick. all the songs, and you can outbid. So if like let's say Sal came in, he's like, oh, I want to play the next five songs, and he pays a dollar. I can see you can what bump it. I, yeah I can bump it by paying two dollars to get my song to no, go. We're first. listening to Pink. I know. I just thought it was, it was I saw brilliant. This, I saw a video of a guy, a husband, who did this to his wife. His wife went there for a girls' night out or whatever. So he hacked into the jukebox and kept playing Chumba Wumba or whatever over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> so she, see, until she realized this, there was her so husband annoying. fucking with her. <laughs> yeah, the whole time. So, so are, are you going to stock up on on Z Biotic? Do you drink on your own when you're alone, or what do yeah, you do? well. Somebody's I, been taking it out of the she, back. Courtney was, Who do you think? has big plans of... of uh, dude, yeah, I took all the ones here for sure, but <laughs> oh I mean, there's, there's none left back there. I was like looking... We hid them because we knew you'd take the other ones. So. Yeah, well, I, again, Courtney was mad at me because she's going to Palm Desert with her girlfriends and everything, and so you know they have big plans... Uh, you know, to sit by the pool. It's like going to be 114, 115 oh like there. I was like, you're crazy. Like, uh, that's going to be like smoking hot down there. But oh, my God. I love introducing that product to people. It's one of the coolest things to watch, like how blown away you Did are. Did you see in the forum? It, it works. No, it's somebody, crazy. Somebody in the private forum goes, uh, they did a post and they said, all right, you know, and it was like, you could tell that they were posting it right when they were about to start drinking. Yeah. So like, all right, I'm going to give this a shot. I'm, you know, I'm hanging out with the boys or something like that. And then people underneath are commenting, oh my God, it totally works. It's really weird, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, later on, he comes back on and he goes, Dude, he goes, we drank, and I don't remember how much I drank. It was a lot. And they're like, and I woke up the next day, and I did not feel at all like I drank. It's the weirdest thing. And so it was a huge conversation about uh, yeah, yeah. And all these people in there were talking about it. So yeah. it is weird. I will say that. It yeah. is a very weird uh, effect. It's, it's nice. It's a nice tool to have in your toolbox. Well, especially for, sure. for someone like me who's – it's changed my relationship with drinking. Like I never, ever would drink. I've drank more in the last like two years than I did the previous 10 just because I can right now, a single drink would throw me off. One yeah. drink would make me have a headache, or not, especially if I had two or three. Where I, I am in the habit of, if I know I'm going to have a drink, I have one of those. I just don't even fuck I around. I do too. Because it doesn't I, even matter if it's just yeah, one Yeah, because one drink, I feel shitty. Yeah, one, one drink will give me like a headache possibly later yep, on that day. Especially if it's wine Yeah, for me. did you, I got to give a shout out to, is it Strength University or Squat University? Is that the name Squat of it? Squat University. Okay. Great quote. So great quote. So talking about why your joints are are better and healthier when they move properly versus when you don't move them. So like the old, the old, you know, the, the, the myth is right. Oh, you got bad knees. Don't do anything for your knees. You got right, bad right. back. Don't do it. And this is a great quote. It said, uh, door hinges that are always moving. Never rust. I thought that was really good. Uh, yeah. uh, that was really good. And it kind of applies to the joints, Aaron too. Aaron puts out really good content, yeah. dude. Very it's good, good Really, really yeah. good content. He's he's exploded, too. I think his book has done really well. When I pull up his, when I look, I look at yours, I always see his mm -hmm. recommended under there. So I he, know he always has really solid good. content mm -hmm. he's thrown out there. Hey, real quick. I hope you're enjoying the podcast. Look, do you eat a high-protein diet? Are you trying to bulk right now? Or are you trying to diet? Well, one of the things that can get in your way are digestive issues. So inflame, inflammation, bloating, constipation, flatulence. These are all signs that you're not really utilizing all the food that you're eating properly. That means that the protein that you're eating might not all be going to your muscles. One way to solve this is to take high quality digestive enzymes, but they're not all created equal. My favorite company for digestive enzymes is Buy Optimizers. Um, in fact, if you go to masszymes.com, that's M A S S. Zymes.com forward slash mind pump. You can try their enzymes risk free and see what you notice. By the way, if you want to have an order, use the code mind pump 10. That's mind pump 10. That'll give you 10% off. Again, it's masszymes.com forward slash mind pump. All right, enjoy the rest of the podcast. First question is from Nove20 Fitness. 
What's the best way to work out your triceps? Tricep training. You know, I read an article when I was a kid that was really instrumental in my workouts, and it said that the triceps make up two-thirds of the arm mass of the arm, right? Because the biceps get all the glory, yeah. but you want, like, impressive-looking arms, you got to develop uh, your triceps. That's where our, the real meat is. That's true, 100%. Yeah. All right, so tricep training. You know, one thing you, that I learned a long time ago that I've always applied, and it definitely works, and I worked it with my clients, and biomechanically speaking, it makes perfect sense, is what you really want to pay attention to with tricep exercises uh, has nothing to do with the grip that you're using on the handles, but rather the position of the elbow. So as the elbow moves higher and higher, the more stress you theoretically will place on what's called the long head of the tricep, which is the, the meaty part on the inside because it stretches when you're overhead. So overhead tricep extension is more of that. You'll get more of the lateral head as they're in front of you. But nonetheless, the elbow position is really what's important. So whatever exercises you pick, make sure you have some where your elbows are next to your body, some where they're in front of your body, and then some where they're, you know, your elbows oh, overhead. Yeah. So I'm going I'm to give something that I think is going to be controversial a little bit because I do know there's quite a few people in the space that disagree with this. Um, but in my experience, uh, training myself and many clients, uh, compound lifts. I agree. So like yeah. the, the incline, uh, you know, close grip bench press and dips are two of the best movements that I saw that blew up my arms and that when I applied to clients, totally. I saw the greatest return from. Now, there's a, like I said, people in the space will argue that the isolation exercises are much better and you get more tricep activation in those type of movements. Um, I don't know if it's attributed to the load because mm -hmm. uh, obviously on an ink, I got to a place where it's I substantial could, more yeah, load. I could incline close grip bench press 225 plus, which I ain't doing nothing with 225 for triceps anywhere mm -hmm. else. I can't skull crush that. Mm -hmm. I can't overhead extend that. I can't tricep kick back that cable push down that, but I can, I can definitely bench that and I can f fight my elbows in. So it's a lot of the triceps carrying the load. And that blew my triceps up. That and then weighted dips, getting to and again, what, what other tricep exercise? So to me, it, it must have something to do with the load, and then the, maybe the CNS adaptation that I'm getting from a, doing a compound lift like that. So those two things. I agree. It's the same reason why you'll get better quad development from a squat than you will from a leg extension. It's the same same stuff is happening. I 100 percent agree. Close grip bench presses. I went through a period of time. Now, my triceps always, it was one of the body parts on me that developed uh, easily. It's one of the only body parts on me that developed easily. Nonetheless, I still focused on them because I wanted to have you know good looking arms. And it was close grip bench presses that did it more than anything. And there was a period of time where I progressed it like you would progress a bench press. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, can I get stronger? Can I? Now, here's the thing that I learned. The close grip that you use on the bench press can't be too close. I remember going really close like this, but that does a flares, number on the wrist. And it also flares yeah, the elbows yeah, up straight on. Really, it's it's like you're more like maybe shoulder width or right inside shoulder width grip for close grip um, is where you'll probably get the, the safety with the muscle activation and you can progressively overload that. And I got to a point where I was using a great amount of weight with the close grip and, and then the dips. I agree with you too. Yeah, the dips is the other the one. The dips for me were, were everything and mainly – when I started to uh, do things like the suspension trainer or the uh, Olympic rings, because of that added bit of instability, it really, you know, challenged uh, my my triceps on a level that I hadn't challenged them before. Uh, it, it just really sparked all new growth. So I think sometimes it's just like unlocking, you know, that one that one piece that's been missing in your training. I also noticed a big difference with talking about dips with, you know, body weight with added weight uh, compared to uh, machine dips because uh, I did machine dips forever. Yeah. Um, I didn't do body weight dips till way later. It was something that Isn't was that funny? It's yeah. like, it should be the same, but it's not at all. No, yeah. it wasn't. It's like lat pull yeah. down versus pull ups. And totally I, different. And I got really strong at machine. In fact, I used to have to stack another plate on the thing. Have I someone hold the, your shoulders Yeah, down. dude. I had someone stand. I really did, did, did tricep dips like that forever and got really good at machine tricep dips and, and done all of them, the hoist ones and all the different machines and from different angles and got really strong. Uh, when I started doing body weight dips and I had to start with just my body weight, I would do just do body weight, like 15 reps, got to a place where I could start to add five, 25, mm -hmm. you know, 50 pounds. And then got to a place where I was loading that for like five reps, mm -hmm. five reps of weighted body weight dips 
Yeah. I saw major leaps in my triceps. Now, here's a superset if you ever want to do a pre exhaust superset for triceps, and it's pretty gnarly, is you do a, a rope press down immediately to either dips or a close grip bench press. Now, uh, this is not for the faint of heart, and use very lightweight when you do the compound lift because the triceps will be ex already pre exhausted. And if you put weight on, that's wrong. You ain't getting the weight back up. But man, that is a killer. You go isolation to compound, and it's a it's more of a, it's kind of a bodybuilding trick, right? To get uh, like a really crazy pump. Oh my gosh, is that I did that? I would do that with dips a lot. I'd go either skull crusher or press down, and then I'd go straight to body weight dips. And it is gnarly. I would only get like five, six reps out on the dip and really focus on the squeeze at the top. But yeah, I agree. Those compound lifts, like nothing will develop the triceps just, again, through experience mm -hmm. like those exercises. And there's a lot of controversy around that. There is. There's a lot of, of our smart friends in the space that are not, they are not pro that at all. You know what it is, is the more muscle you have and the more experienced you are, the more you can get away with uh, doing isolation movements and developing those muscles. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you know, now after I have developed my- You've already my, built a really huge base to work with. Yeah, and, and again, like the studies show, you have to do way less volume and intensity to keep muscle. So I think what happens is people get really advanced, they build a lot of muscle, and they did it through compound lifts, and they did it through all the- And then they, once they're at that level, then they start throwing in this other stuff, and they think, oh, this is what works. Yeah. But I don't, I think that's only works that way because you've built that- that solid base to begin with. Yeah. So most people watching this are not in that situation. I also think that they they right. they um, overvalue the whole you know muscle activation research totally. that's out there. Uh -huh. There's a lot of research out there to that support the point that you made, which is you know oh if you do leg extensions, the quads light up more than in a barbell back squat. But there's not too many people that would make the case that you could build bigger quads from. Uh, a leg extension than you can barbell mm -hmm. back squats, but yet that's what the you know muscle activation studies will show. Yep. So I do think there's people that lean heavily on that research to try and support why you know tricep nothing activates the tricep like tricep push down like a cross body row, single arm row yes, press down yes and they'll try and make the claim that that and which by the way a movement like that which i think that is one of the ones that is that shows that touts all the muscle activation you can't do very much weight at all on that it's very very minimal weight and weight isn't everything and the only way to yeah, there's value over. to it but you, you're yeah. going to compare that to a, a close grip bench press or yeah, a dip? 225 no pounds way. like no they're, they're going to beef those arms up a lot more Next question is from James Straffolino. Is it worthwhile to train biceps with heavier loads and lower rep ranges? Oh, great follow-up question. Okay, so it's beneficial to train any muscle mm -hmm. with lower reps and heavier loads. Now, here's the problem with uh, biceps. Most of the bicep exercises that we know are isolation-type exercises. And here's why low reps and heavy weight tends to not work well for biceps is because when you start to load a curl, it stops looking like a curl. It starts looking like some other exercise, and you start to incorporate other body parts. And most people don't have the control or the discipline to go heavy without allowing that type of stuff to happen. So here's how you work around it, and here's what's interesting. We just talked about triceps. We just talked about compound lifts for triceps. For some reason, nobody considers compound bicep lifts. It's almost like they don't exist. Mm. This is totally not true. You do a supinated grip, so palms back grip, chin, chin up, up, and you do it where you're you're upright and you're focusing on squeezing the bicep. So what you're not doing is leaning back and trying to get the back squeeze, but you're, you're kind of keeping your body really, really straight and you're squeezing the biceps. You load that for low reps and you watch what happens to your biceps. One of the best exercises I ever did uh, for my I, arm. You know, and I also think mm -hmm. that um, the reason why I don't personally worry too much about this is if you're doing... Uh, singles doubles triples uh of um heavy compound lifts like deadlifting and squatting overhead pressing like, even rowing yeah rowing right the, i mean there's when you do a row with 225 on the bar there is massive bicep activation happening totally. and, and so you only do five reps of that mm -hmm. and it, there's great benefits for your back and that but there's great benefits to your your arms and that so I kind of allowed like my heavy compound lifts to take care of the low rep bicep and tricep work and then focus more on isolation exercises and north of, you know, five to six reps yeah. for my for my arms and stuff. But it doesn't mean that those movements don't have value, especially if you're, you're somebody who doesn't heavy barbell row or heavy deadlift or heavy overhead press sometimes. If you don't do those movements, which you should be doing, 
uh, then then there's lots more value for that person to do a heavy you know three rep uh, you know straight bar curl. Although there's lots of room for error and cheating and potential injury for very little benefit, but doesn't mean there's no value in it. Yeah, and if you got yeah. good form, why not? I mean that's it is kind of like one of those examples where there's not a lot of options. Like so that that's a good one that the you know supinated grip uh, chin up. Um, but yeah, loading a, a heavy bar and just doing a few reps of that, like it's just like you're gonna have to use too much body English to to really pull that off, and, and uh, isolating that is pretty difficult. So you know, there's just some exercises out there more conducive towards that rep range than others, and that's just how you got to yeah. you know I mean, sift through it. I used to do that. I mean, Arnold talks about it in his cheat curls. Yeah, cheat curls. Yeah, yeah. and um, I'm sure I, some, I, there's some value. And to I that. and I used to teach it to advanced clients. If I had an advanced client, I, I'd teach him uh, treat uh, cheat exercises like that, where you can use a little bit of body English to to get it up. But the the when I stopped doing that was when I really started heavy compound. When I started training, I never before you guys, I was never I never did a single of a deadlift yeah. like that just did not exist mm -hmm. in my training routine but once i started doing heavy singles doubles and triples on these like big compound lifts like dude my tricep my bicep like they they definitely got stimulated and blew up from yeah. that so this is totally not i mean you guys are always in the bodybuilding world and, and spectrum like for me like what we used to set up a lot of times was the sled and with ropes and like as heavy as we possibly could to to pull the oh, rope, yeah. uh, you know, towards you sitting down. That was a fucking killer, right? Arm and bicep workout. Yeah, blow your arms out just doing that, even though it's a back movement. It's a back right? movement. That's what you're doing it for. But you're fried. Yeah, if you're doing really heavy back exercises, those biceps are getting that yeah. heavy load. Well, yeah, I mean, by proxy. I mean, Justin's an example. I think you've probably done curls 10 times your entire life. I mean, most yep. of your, everything you do is compound. Right. And yet you have really well developed arms. You could see this with strength athletes. Look at Olympic lifters, uh, you know, incredible development in their arms and shoulders. Rarely ever do curls. Look at gymnasts. Gymnasts, yeah. They have incredible biceps. They're constantly pulling themselves up. But that chin up that you do or that pull up you do with a supinated grip, you can angle your body and make it more bicep or make it more back. When I'm doing it for back, I tend to stick my chest out, lean back a little bit, and I squeeze my back. When I'm doing if I do it for biceps, I'm more upright and I'm squeezing my arms and it looks like a shorter range of motion. And let me tell you, it's like I can't think of an exercise that loads the bicep more than something like that. In fact, a lot of people who are really strong at pull-ups, you might not even, you, you probably definitely shouldn't load it. You might need even need some assistance to really make it a bicep exercise because it's not easy. Next question is from FT Reckless. I work out in my basement and this low ceiling with a low ceiling. Therefore, I can't do standing overhead presses. What are your thoughts on barbell Z presses as an alternative? Love it. What that's, a great that's exercise. That's the way to go. I, yeah. I've actually recommended that yeah. same question. Yeah. yeah. One, one of the few exercises that I learned in the last, you know, I don't know, eight years that blew me away. There's very few exercises I can learn nowadays where I'm like, this is an exercise that now needs to be in my routine. Almost never happens just because I've been around for so long. Z presses is one of them. It, it Because of the, the, the way you're on the ground – and how you have to maintain your posture, the the extent, just the extension at the top, the pump you get in your shoulders is just insane, and you can't you can't use much weight on it, but man, it works the shoulders incredibly, and it just exposes all you know in terms of like how well you're bracing your your spine and and, and supporting yourself uh, in an overhead position, and that's then going to be amazing for when you have the ability to, to press overhead and watch what that does in terms of building up, uh, you know, your, your core strength and stability, uh, to then increase the amount of load you'll probably be able to produce to an overhead press just by focusing on Z pressing. I actually think it should be a prerequisite before overhead pressing. I think that's how, how beneficial Z press is, is, because when I think of exercises that were either dangerous or client more clients uh, struggled with than not, uh, overhead pressing is one of them. Overhead pressing, yeah, low uh, back is the weak link. Yeah, always people in. always arch their low back and their their limited range of motion in their shoulders and their tight lats. They're all common things: limited range of motion in the shoulders, tight lats, weak low back. 
recipe for disaster on an overhead press. And so either one, they end up doing machines and shorten their range of motion up and just they stay in that position. Or they try and do the exercise by fully extending and their low back arches mm -hmm. and they have issues. So training somebody in a Z press first really forces people into good mechanics. And so I, I fell in love with this because I, I found it at the same time that I was working on those exact problems I had. So I had I had that. I was the bodybuilder, short range of motion, you know, military presser. And then I remember, you know, training with Justin and everything he did was full extension overhead, overhead carries, you know, your uh, explosive presses and strict presses, like, and everything was to full extension. And I just, I was, you could watch me do it and I was doing it like a bodybuilder. I wasn't getting full extension, recognized I had an issue and a problem there. And when I found the Z press, it was one of the best strength exercises to reinforce the good posture and form for that movement. Yeah, one other thing I wanted to add was if um, if you have access to like a landmine, uh, you could do like a kneeling press with that as well and load that pretty substantially for one arm. So. Yeah, and in all over all pressing overhead pressing movements can be done in the Z press fashion. So you could do it with dumbbells, you could do Arnold presses, right. you could do kettlebell presses. Yeah, you, could do, yep. you could do all those things. And by the way, some of you watching right now who you you're, you've never done this before and your mobility may be a little bit of an issue but you do lots of overhead presses sit on the floor just grab the bar and just focus on full extension and w after 10 reps tell you, tell me how you that's feel that's how i had to start yeah. i had to start with just the 45 pound bar nothing on it and and just stabilizing over the top and then coming back down yep. full range and uh, but progress that out. i think getting strong at that you watch how good your overhead press and your shoulder development is Next question is from Simple Not Easy 3. I just started anabolic last week and I already feel stronger. What makes the program so effective? Who <laughs> picked this question? <laughs> I did. You know what? So, why is your program so awesome? Yeah, why are you so awesome? <laughs> no, you know why I picked this Tell question? Us. This is a good, it's a good discussion. So, so they're talking about MAPS anabolic. And the, the reason why we get this question often with this program, and this will, with the, this will turn into a good discussion, is because when you look at MAPS anabolic, with the for the untrained eye, you look at the programming and you're like, oh, I, I I know all these exercises. Like, what's so great about it? Like, okay, you're doing some sets here, you're doing some reps here. I see that you're doing squats. I see you're doing deadlifts. I think you're, what's what's so great about this? And it's it's a good discussion because it highlights the value of programming. And by the way, ev all the most effective workout programs that people talk about online, you know, starting strength. Five by five, you know, MAPS Anabolic, you could put that up there. Other programs, if you look at them, and these are all ones that people constantly promote and say, man, if you do this, you'll you'll notice results. They all appear to be very simple. Mm -hmm. They focus on the basics, but the beauty is in the programming, the frequency, Mastery the rep of ranges, the mechanics. and all that stuff. So that's why it's so effective. It's because it's taking the most effective parts and then it puts it together in a recipe that just works. And it does. Again, it highlights that the complexity and weirdness of a program doesn't have much to do uh, you know, with the type of results. I mean, this get. is the reason why Mind Pump happened. This would not have happened had Sal sent me over a program he was working on and then it looked like all it the like other Zumba, in, yeah. Yeah, it looked like all the other influencers programs yeah. that are out there. Because at this point in my career, there's there's a handful of things that I had started to piece together. And he addressed all of them in that. Uh, and frequency was one of them. Uh, the big compound lifts was another. Uh, starting somebody in a five by five strength phase. These were all things I started to hack into and realize like we're magical, right? Like one of the easy, first of all, uh, we train a majority of women. So most of our clients, probably 70%. Were females. Uh, what I found out of training so many of them over all the years is there's a very small percentage of them that are not afraid of lifting heavy weight. There's a massive Five. stigma still yeah. there. Yeah, there's like 1% of clients I got in my entire career that were female that were like, oh yeah, Adam, I train five by five. Yeah. Like never did that happen. So, and you know, as a trainer, if you move somebody into a phase of training that you know, one, is extremely valuable and two, they've never done before, yeah, away. they're going to be, they're going to see results like they've never saw before or like what they saw when they first touched weights the first time. So that was the other thing. Then I, at that time too, I realized like, 
you know, instead of doing all these crazy creative exercises, if I could just get my clients to do those five big lifts and to do them frequently, two to three times a week, their body would just rapidly change. That was inside the program like that. The trigger sessions were also freaking mind-blowing because that was a time, too, when I was realizing that, oh, it's not about hammer your body and then don't touch it for an entire week. Right. It's that, that whole balloon idea of constantly kind of popping the balloon up and keeping that you know, consistent Active recovery. Signal. Yeah, that exact and, and helping facilitate recovery and keep that signal up. All those things are in that program. And it's just a a perfect storm for 90% of the population that's interested in training. Yeah. And if you add all those things together and they follow a program, it's why it's it's yeah. why it sells the most. Everything in there was uh, geared around honing in that muscle building signal, which is what you describe all the time. And uh, it made sure that each one of those components was, you know, driving that signal back in the forefront. And so it's, again, and that's why it's so effective because it has all those implemented in there deliberately. Uh, so it'll keep you in that state. Yeah. It's it, again, it's in, in the, to, to most people who are consumers in this space. So they're not fitness professionals or coaches with lots of experience. It can be hard to judge a routine when you look at it. You know, people will send you a program. This is my workout. And to the untrained eye, it's all, it's typically, this is how they'll judge it. Oh, wow. That looks really challenging. I yeah. think that's gonna be a good workout right. or, Oh my God, what is that exercise? I never heard it before. Oh wow, that looks really crazy. I think I'm gonna try that. And so they they just have no idea and they end up picking program or they pick a program because someone that looks the way they want to right. look is promoting. They're it. shredded, so therefore it's gonna happen to me. Yeah, and you know, this is one of the reasons why even though I never competed in strength sports, um, one of the reasons why I, I, I place so much value on strength sports like powerlifting, Olympic lifting. Or any type of competitive sport where you have to lift, where it's objective. It's like you either get stronger or you yeah. don't. Strongman competition. The reason why, I, even at an early age, you know, even when I subscribed to all the bodybuilding magazines, I also subscribed to these obscure powerlifting magazines because I really realized early on these guys and girls, like they are following the best workouts because you either get stronger or you don't. Right. Like you can, there's a lot of people that look better than me that don't work out nearly as well as I do and have nearly the good diet that I have because of genetics or other factors. But when you're in competition over strength and you either get stronger or you don't, and that's the bottom line. So the best programming came out of these strength camps. Right. And also when you look at the way people trained or strength athletes trained, you know, at the turn of the century, before supplements, before advertisers, it was just what worked. And you found some commonalities. Like everybody trained the whole body three days a week. This is how everybody worked out. Some people split it up, but most people didn't. Everybody did certain lifts and got really good at them. Nobody trained to failure. They all said, no, you got to make sure you have enough energy for the next workout. And it's like, there's wisdom there, you know? Well, and it's very deceiving for the consumer because you can get shredded on a shitty program. Yeah. Because getting yeah. shredded is, is just reducing body fat. So if you're just touching weights and you're dieting and you get lean... You, you might have the perception as a consumer like, man, that program worked hella good. Yeah. Like, no, your diet worked really good. Yeah, you got, got there in spite of the crap. Right. That's program. right. And the, the, the program actually didn't help you as much as you think. If you have really good programming and you diet well, it's amazing even more how much progress you can make. But if you don't know that and you look at a program and what you're looking for is how creative it is or how many random things in it that you don't know or how hard it mm -hmm. looks like it's going to be like those are all terrible markers of what a good program I, is and it's in it, it's actually the beauty in anabolic is its simplicity totally i had a i had a buddy uh, this reminds me of the story i had a buddy who's always had challenging uh, challenges growing his legs he was tall he had relatively skinny legs. No matter what he did, they wouldn't build. And he did all the routines and all the combinations and the leg press and hack squat and leg curl and all that stuff. And then somebody told him to do this program called Squat Every Day. I don't know if you guys have heard about this, yeah. right? Where you do squats every single day. Now you vary the intensity. So some days are hard. Some days are real easy. But you do nothing else for your legs except you do squats. And he was convinced because he had tried everything. And I told him, I said, this is the one thing that's going to work for you. And he goes, ah, I'm skeptical. Like squats. He goes, it's too simple. I do all these other exercises. Let's see what happens. He gained more size. He gained so much size in his legs over such a short period of time. He got stretch marks in his legs and he was blown away. 
and and he couldn't believe it. And I was like, well, yeah, that's it's the the programming isn't just the 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 weirdness or craziness or variety of exercises. Programming has a lot more to do with things that really work. And oftentimes, when we look at something that's designed that way, to us it seems simple and rudimentary. But that's not that's not true. Try it out and then see it's what no happens. No different than a software engineer writing code. I mean, one of us could sit down and put a bunch of code stuff ones to, and zeros yeah i could, I could <laughs> put a <laughs> bunch <laughs> in a row too and be like hey check out my code i wrote and fucking you plug it in it doesn't Dude. work you know what I'm saying? Oh, that'd be scary I'm saying, to that's see how i hey, i feel that insulted when i see programming sometimes by by trainers that try and claim some shit's good like oh check this out like no bro probably how a software engineer would feel if i sat down trying to write code for fucking oh, a computer totally, totally. laugh at me <laughs> look if you like our information head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free guides okay so it's just free information that can help you build muscle or burn body fat, or become healthier, reduce pain, move better. We have guides for personal trainers. Again, it's mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at mindpumpjustin. You can find me at mindpumpsal and Adam at mindpumpadam.